folks. So uh, last time, uh, in my last video, I showed you a bunch of uh, standard Smith & Wesson handcuffs. They all use uh, the standard Smith & Wesson key. There we go. And you can see it's very simple. It's just a small barrel key uh, with a solid flag there and a little post on the end uh, for activating the double lock. Uh, and Smith & Wesson keys will actually fit uh, the vast majority of handcuffs on the market. Um, just as uh, the keys for many other brands of handcuff will actually fit most Smith & Wessons. And this is not uh, by pure coincidence. This is actually because uh, for most police departments, it actually is much easier to have a universal key. Because uh, when you have uh, one officer bring uh, someone into the police station uh, for processing or holding, uh, you don't want to, they don't want to have to fiddle around looking for the exact key for that exact pair of handcuffs. So having every officer have handcuffs that work with the same key and having every officer have a copy of that key really makes things a lot easier when you have many different officers all having to uh, arrest and uh, release or restrain and release uh, people. So you don't have to go around hunting for uh, Officer Bob because Officer Bob uh, put his handcuffs on someone and only he has the key uh, to Officer Bob's handcuffs. Uh, but every so often uh, there are situations where that actually is considered a disadvantage, either because uh, the person that you are trying to restrain may have uh, access to one of these keys, or uh, because, as I showed you in the last video, it is fairly easy to uh, pick uh, the handcuffs that accept this standard key. Uh, so one of the agencies that has been particularly concerned about the uh, universal or near universal uh, standard handcuff key for a very long time is the United States Marshals Service uh, because they are responsible for things like transporting uh, high-risk prisoners to and from court or from uh, one prison to another and unlike uh, your local police department who usually uh, is rarely more than an hour or so away from uh, wherever their holding cells are uh, the U.S. Marshals have to deal with transporting fugitives and prisoners across the country, which can mean that they end up uh, having to have someone in handcuffs for many hours, if not uh, days, under some circumstances. And under those conditions, they want a handcuff that is... Uh, that does not use a key that just about anyone can get their hands on and uh, is somewhat more difficult for someone to uh, manipulate. So, uh, back in the uh, 1960s, Smith & Wesson uh, had come up with the Model 94, which used a very uh, innovative and unique um, uh, tubular lock mechanism, uh, which worked out very well for quite a while until uh, sometime in the late 70s, I believe, uh, someone figured out that uh, it was possible to open them using a uh, uh, very common style of pen that was around at the time. Uh, as far as I know, the pens aren't really made, or at least aren't commonly available anymore. But uh, by the early 1980s, when uh, Smith & Wesson decided to uh, revamp their, their handcuff offerings, uh, the Model 94 was uh, put to bed, and it was replaced with the Model 104. So you have the uh, Model 100, which replaced the standard uh, Model 90, and then the uh, one of Model 104, which replaced the 94, uh, the high-security handcuff. And if we look at them uh, side by side, they do look very similar, 
uh, on the front. Uh, the only real obvious difference here is this uh, little collar or raised uh, edge around the keyhole on the front. And if we flip them over, uh, you'll see that the Model 104 has this sort of large dome-shaped protrusion on the back of where the uh, keyhole is. Uh, now, unfortunately, I can't figure out where I put my cutaway Model 100s uh, when I last had them out, but I do have this uh, cutaway of the Model 104. So if I had the cutaways side by side, you would actually be able to see that inside the case, these really are basically identical internally. That uh, bar there, see if I can get some more light in here for you. That bar there that wraps around and then uh, becomes the spring for the ratchet uh, pole is the double locking bar that you can see through that slot uh, normally. Then that uh, black sort of hammer shaped piece, that is the uh, ratchet pole. The spring presses those teeth uh, down in there while a couple of little impressed uh, or stamped impressions in the metal case uh, hold it in place. And then you have uh, the keyhole there, and hopefully you can see that. There we go. So the reason for that raised collar around the keyhole is that that is actually a bushing that is press fit into the face of the handcuff, and it actually forms an additional ward around the keyhole. Uh, and that bump on the back is because the uh, keyway is actually sunk into the handcuff somewhat deeper than uh, standard handcuff keys are. And here's uh, the key for it. So you can see they look fairly similar at first glance. Uh, obviously, uh, the bow of the key is a little bit thinner, but when I hold them next to each other, you'll also notice that the shafts are much thinner. Come on, focus here. And if we put the tips side by side, you'll also notice that uh, while the tip of the 104, the flag on the tip, I should say, is a little bit taller than the standard key, it's uh, most of that extra height uh, has this little cutout, and that's so that this key can fit into the handcuff and pass under or around the little wall in the keyway. So, how do we go about picking that, given that uh, the keyway is much narrower and more restrictive, and we have to uh, reach up and around that collar? Well, we still use uh, that same uh, starting material, the common bobby pin, uh, but this time we're going to put a sort of U-shaped bend in the tip. Uh, this is a little bit difficult to do when you are actually in handcuffs and can't use tools, but, uh, you know, we're not actually being arrested here, and I don't have any plans to uh, be designated a high-risk prisoner by the U.S. Marshals Service anytime soon, so uh, we have the luxury of being able to use tools. Uh, so I made this with a pair of pliers to make it a lot easier, uh, and then the second step, though, is then grinding this down because this uh, one and a half millimeter wide uh, bit of flat wire that the bobby pin is made out of is way too wide to allow us to fit into uh, the keyway on the Model 104. Uh, so file it down to 
around a millimeter wide, maybe a little bit less, and it will fit much more easily. Now again, we are going to apply the double lock. There we go. It's all locked up. Uh, the operation of these uh, handcuffs is exactly the same as the standard. It's really just the different key that makes this uh, any more secure than a standard pair of Smith & Wesson handcuffs. And so all we're going to do is we're going to take the bent tip there, slide that in, and then allow it to follow along the sides of the keyway. And we're going to, again, try to lever off keyway wall, and there we have it. Uh, we have the double lock undone. Then we're going to go back the other way. Again, we're still riding around uh, that little wall there. And we're going to try to find a point of leverage where we can grab and get purchase on the uh, Ratchet pull. There we go. So that's a little bit uh, more difficult to reach the ratchet pull, but still absolutely doable. And uh, just before I go, I want to say thank you very much to Aspiring Lockpicker, uh, who uh, pointed out to me uh, that filing this down would make it work much better. Uh, previously, I had only been able to reliably undo the double lock. Um, so, until next time, uh, thank you, stay safe, and, uh, happy picking.